this video, I talk about what would have happened if Jordan Alfound was not in Dreams Minecraft Speedrunner vs Five Hunters rematch. This got pretty fun and in depth, so would Dream have survived or died? If you like this, subscribe. It really helps out and it's free. Enjoy. Three minutes in and Jordan Alfound already changed the course of this entire video. All he did was hit Dream once. Dream intended him to go into the direction towards the right, but once George jump scared Dream with his attack, the path changed to a zigzaggy one in order to get George off Dream's back. In this way, Dream fell on Desert Temple from which he ran off to let the hunters get, as there was not enough time. If George wasn't here, then nobody would have found the temple as everyone would have been focused on Dream and his path to the right of that hill, which blocks the temple from being seen in the first place. Everyone then heads towards the ocean, so they pretty much went the opposite way of where Dream initially intended to go. George keeps chasing Dream throughout the beautiful coral reef. Until so Minecraft blood gets spilled on it when Dream kills George. Thanks to this kill, Dream gets better tools without having to craft them. In other words, George actually helped Dream by chasing him into and throughout the ocean as Dream killed George and got his loot. Shortly after this merciless murder, Dream decides to really play into the murderer role and sneak on the hunters and kill them with his murder axe. It's just a Dream is a hunter. Right after killing Awesome Dude, Dream turns 180 degrees to make George his next victim. Sapdap comes shortly after Dream gets hit away by George, then getting hit by Sapdap as well. If George not found did not exist in this video, then Dream would have instantly noticed Sapdap instead, quite possibly staying on land and not getting into the water as he would have had a better chance of killing Sapnap. Shortly after this short time after the merciless murder, George comes back to life and gets dolphins to help him speedrun swimming, catching up to Dream and hitting him onto the beach. In this particular chase, George is in charge. He's the combatant, the leader, the man who is about to kill Dream. Oh, he just died again. Now here is where things get complicated. Dream towers up with blocks like wool, sand, dirt, wood. Wait, did I say wood? That's right. What's so special about just 15 blocks of wood? Dream never once mined wood throughout this chase. Except that time uh, and that time. Okay, he did get wood. But he uses the acacia wood for his first crafting table and then uses this oak tree to create tools, having only seven pathetic pieces of planks left in his inventory. And then there is George died to dream and what did he have in his inventory wooden planks and a bunch of them i myself counted exactly how many planks this two-piece dropped stack could represent and the amount is from 2 to 17 inclusive and it all makes sense because dream picked up six planks in his first kill and then two more here when george dropped them to craft something resulting in a total of 15 crucial wooden planks that dream used half of to tower up and the other half to create a shield if not for george's eight blocks dream would have had a harder time in this scenario as he would have had to choose either to craft a shield but not escape the hunters via this tower or he would have towered up but not had the shield that saved his ass so many times later on in the video <sighs> and that's not all now it's back to Sapnap being the main pvp guy again like usual he hits and punches dream all the usual until dream kills Sapnap. but instead of him burning Sapnap's corpse loot george not found and never halo each pick up half of the loot and then george proceeds to put on Sapnap's armor as well to get chased again and die again with Sapnap coming at the perfect time to get the items back as if Sapnap never died. <laughs> this was one of the craziest yet goofiest parts of this video. The way it was timed was too good. Put some goofy sounds over it. Sapnap then continues in his attempts to kill Dream while wearing the recovered items. So if it were not for George, Sapnap wouldn't have had a chance in killing Dream unless Bad Boy Halo picked up all the items instead. Later on in another arc, George finds a bastion and points it out to the under hunters. This is a smaller detail but it is important nevertheless as bastions have a bunch of gold which could be used to trade with piglins. George also points out Dream's TNT explosions. So in the nether, George was on his sneaky side, trying to find any small details like the Bastion or the distant explosions that could help the hunters gain some leverage against Dream. Triple combo, George digs under Dream in his chase, and right before he manages to escape, Dream falls and almost dies, all thanks to George. George is also once again in the lead of a chase against Dream, and he manages to land a bunch of hits. This continues all the way to the end until George is knocked off into the void once and for all. Overall, Jordan I found played a clearly important role in this video. He served as an attacker, as a leader, and as a hero. If George was not in this video, Dream would not only have had an easier time in some situations, but he also would have actually had a harder time in some times like the tower scene, as he would not have had enough items as he did when he obtained the loot from George's Minecraft corpse. There are a lot of ways that George's presence delayed and helped Dream, and this video explains how they exactly did that.